Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Today guys, I want to talk to you about caffeine and hair loss. Did you know that there are peer-reviewed scientific medical studies that demonstrate topical caffeine lotions to actually be equally as effective as Rogaine in the treatment of male pattern baldness? Stay tuned to find out more. Guys, if you have just found our channel, do make sure to hit subscribe and hit the notifications button so you can be the first to know when we upload a new video. In this video, we will be going over numerous medical studies and you can find links to all of them in the description below. Caffeine and hair loss. Guys, this is such an exciting and promising area of research for men who are battling hair loss. In the past decade, the number and quality of scientific papers dealing with this topic has simply exploded. I will give you the big picture, the overview of this research in this video, and then in the end of the video, I'm actually gonna tell you our recommended caffeine-containing product. All right, guys, so let's get straight into it. The first study started with the basics, caffeine absorption by the hair follicle. It was found early on that a two-minute application of a caffeine-containing shampoo was sufficient for caffeine to be absorbed into the hair follicle. Furthermore, caffeine molecule absorption through the follicle was quicker and more efficient compared to absorption via the epidermal layer of the skin. Caffeine only takes two minutes to be absorbed by the hair follicle and five minutes for blood levels to rise. But caffeine absorbed through the epidermal layer of the skin is slower, taking up to 20 minutes to show up in the blood. Now the first studies examining the actual link between caffeine and hair growth were in vitro, using hair follicles from scalp biopsies of men with male pattern baldness. In vitro means that rather than examining the effects of caffeine on real live balding men, the researchers took these men's hair follicles and then experimented with them in test tubes in the lab. The substances researchers experimented with were testosterone and caffeine. Predictably, testosterone suppressed hair follicle growth in vitro. It's nothing new here guys, if you are a regular viewer of this channel, then you will probably know that dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, a metabolite of testosterone, is the primary molecule implicated in male pattern hair loss. But that being said, the caffeine part of this study gave the real interesting results. Low concentrations of caffeine when applied together with the testosterone actually counteracted the effects of the testosterone. And when treated with caffeine alone without any testosterone, the hair follicles demonstrated increased growth in vitro. Following this, one of the first studies on actual human patients was done in Italy, where a group of 40 men used a caffeine-containing lotion for four months. After four months, the researchers found an average of 15% reduction in hair loss as determined by the hair pull test. This is where you gently pull on a small strand of a patient's hair and count the number of hairs that fall off. When asked, fully 80% of participants reported that they had perceived a reduction in the intensity of their hair loss. Now, an earlier study by the same team of Italian researchers with a slightly smaller sample of 30 men had also produced similar results. In this slightly smaller study, 70% of the men using a caffeine shampoo for six months showed a reduction in hair loss as measured by the hair pull test. So guys, this actually takes us right up to 2017 to the first randomized clinical trial that directly compared the efficacy of a caffeine-containing topical liquid to minoxidil 5% solution good old Rogaine. In this study, a total of 210 men with male pattern baldness were randomly assigned to either the caffeine-based solution or the Rogaine groups. The average age of the subjects was 31 years and they were recruited to trial across five different medical facilities in India. Now, subjects in the caffeine group applied the caffeine solution twice daily, whereas those in the Rogaine group applied the Rogaine twice daily. The percentage of hairs in the anagen or growth phase was measured for all subjects at the start of the study, then after six months, and then when the study treatment had concluded. The researchers also assessed the men's own personal perception of the treatment efficacy, as well as the professional opinion of the men's treating dermatologists. Guys, the results were clear. After six months, men in both the Rogaine and caffeine treated groups showed clear gains, and these gains were of the same magnitude. The men in the Rogaine group showed an average 11.7% increase in the percentage of anagen phase compared to 10.6% for the caffeine group. Whilst this difference was not statistically significant, 
men in both groups reported significant improvements in the degree of hair loss and hair thickness, and these differences were again the same across both groups. The treating dermatologists in both groups assessed the treatments to be working equally well with regards to hair strength, and again, there were no statistically significant differences across the two groups. After the six months were up, the dermatologists of 98% of subjects in the caffeine group recommended that they continued treatment compared to 100% in the Rogaine group. Now guys, I just want to read a couple of lines directly from the study authors themselves at their conclusion of the paper. As well as the fact that genetically predisposed hair loss can hardly be classified as a hair disease, its treatment with drugs might be of concern when taking risk to benefit profiles into account. Such ethical considerations become even more important when the treatment is applied or administered daily for the rest of the subject's life and has to be done lifelong and not just only within a short therapy period. Well-tolerated ingredients are prerequisites for safe treatment against hereditary alopecia and the caffeine solution assessed in this study seemed to meet this requirement. Guys, here at HairGuard, we share these points of view, which is why we have developed our very own HairGuard Caffeine Shampoo. Our shampoo contains another natural compound that has been shown to be at least as effective as Rogaine with none of the side effects. The name of this compound is Oluropine. In addition to caffeine and Oluropine, it contains taurine, coconut oil, apple cider vinegar, and peppermint extract, all shown to promote strong, healthy hair. Guys, at HairGuard, we don't believe in magic bullets and we recommend that the shampoo be used in combination with nutritional supplementation, topical stimulation of the scalp to help relieve tension and promote circulation, and obviously, above all, a healthy lifestyle. You can check it out in the link below. I'll link you to that in the description. So guys, that's all we have time for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comment below. What do you think of caffeine and hair loss? Do make sure to hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. Till next time, Leon from HairGuard.com.